Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya transformation deck as suggested by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 6 mana sorcery from Dominaria United, although I haven't featured it in a deck before. So it's 6 mana, exile up to 1 target artifact, up to 1 target creature, do the same for enchantment, planeswalker and land, and then for each permanent exiled, this way its controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a card that shares a card type with it, puts that card onto the battlefield, then shuffles. So it's kind of like a mass transmogrify that can hit various card types at once, and the two main ones we're focusing on here are creature and artifact. We only have three creatures in the deck, and they're all titan of industry. We only have two artifacts in the deck, and they're both portal to Phyrexia. So these are the expensive cards we're trying to cheat into play with our chaotic transformation, since we can easily generate creature tokens without the card itself being a creature, and the same with artifact tokens, like various treasure tokens, for instance, that we can generate to then target with our transformation. And we can pull this off as early as turn 4 in this deck. Ideally, we start with a turn 2 channeled careful cultivation, which will make a 1-1 monk token that can tap for green. Then on turn 3, we could already cast a big score, discard a card to draw 2, and make 2 treasure tokens. And on the following turn, we can cast our transformation, targeting both our monk token after it taps for mana, and one of the remaining treasure tokens, which means we can cheat a creature and an artifact in play, and we can also target our own land for value, and then we'll get both a portal to Phyrexia and Titan of Industry. Titan, of course, a great way to stabilize as a 7-7 with reach and trample when it enters can take out an artifact or enchantment, gain 5 life, make a 4-4 rhino token, or maybe put a shield counter on a creature we control, and then portal to Phyrexia will wipe the opponent's board by making them sacrifice 3 creatures, and at the beginning of our upkeep we can return a creature from any graveyard to the battlefield under our control, and it also turns into a Phyrexian, so if our opponent answers Titan of Industry, we'll simply get it back with Portal to Phyrexia and generate even more value in the process. So that's the powerful late game our deck is capable of. Sometimes you also target opposing permanents with transformation. If the opponent has an expensive creature in play, you can hope it transforms into something smaller, and you can also target your own lands since you might find a land that enters untapped and have one more mana to work with afterwards. And then we also have a bunch of enchantments in this deck that we can sometimes target and hope to upgrade them. So that can also come up, especially if we cast a Bitter Reunion early in the game to discard and draw two. Then we usually don't mind targeting it with our transformation and hope to upgrade it into a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. There's a wedding announcement. And then also an important addition, two copies of Static Net as a four-man enchantment when it enters can exile an opposing non-land permanent an opponent controls until Static Net leaves the battlefield. So we've often seen these types of effects before, usually costing three mana. This one's a little bit more expensive, but it also gains two life when it enters and it generates a tapped power stone token, which is important for us to maybe target with our chaotic transformation so we can grab our portal to Phyrexia, since outside of treasure tokens there's not a whole lot of other artifacts we can generate, so the extra power stone tokens help out. Then I'm also running a one-off repair and recharge, which in addition to making a power stone token can also bring back an artifact, enchantment or planeswalker card from our graveyard to the battlefield, so sadly it doesn't bring back Titan of Industry, but can still bring back a portal to Phyrexia if we manage to discard it earlier in the game or if the opponent answered it and can also bring back one of our many enchantments so that's still quite useful and then looking through the rest of our deck, we've got some cheap spot removal with two copies of Strangle and the full playset of a Braid, which can deal three damage to a creature or take out an artifact. And then one Destroy Evil, especially useful against a mono blue deck where it can destroy a large Haughty Djinn or Tolarian Terror, but can also take out an enchantment. And then Cultivation, as we mentioned, more of a two drop in this deck since we can channel it on turn two, but we can technically also cast it for three mana enchanting a creature and we may find it with our Chaotic Transformation. So that's one of the least exciting enchantments to hit with it. And then at 3 mana, of course, full set of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which is the glue that holds the deck together, as it will start out by making a Shaman token, so that's a creature for transformation. If the Shaman attacks, it makes a treasure, so that's an artifact for transformation. It helps us ramp and fix our mana, and it also improves our hand with a second chapter, maybe allowing us to discard a portal to Phyrexia, to then later bring it back with a repair and recharge. And eventually the Reflection of Kiki-Jiki also has awesome synergy with Titan of Industry. If we ever get to copy it, it's usually game over. And 
and then two copies of Wedding Announcement, which also makes creature tokens, which we can then target with Transformation, can maybe draw a few extra cards and transform into Wedding Festivity to pump the team, and then a one-off Incandescent Aria, which can be very helpful against aggressive decks like Monoret, dealing three damage to each non-token creature, so it's going to be a one-sided board wipe as it won't affect any of our tokens, and then at four mana besides Static Net, four copies of Big Score, which is also very important to set up an early transformation, and then we mentioned everything else. The mana base also has the channel lands, Igancho for interaction, Crucible, another way to make some creature tokens for us to target, and Boseju to take out artifacts or enchantments, and then a ton of dual lands, as well as a Jet Mirror's Garden for additional mana fixing, and we can cycle it later in the game to find more action. So yeah, that's our Chaotic Portal deck. Let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems reasonable enough to keep. So I doubt we'll destroy evil on turn two, but turn three fable, turn four big score is still nice. Opponent to red green, so let's see what variety. And it's going to be a firebrand, so gruel aggro confirmed. Sadly, didn't have a turn to a braid. I think we still fable on three. While well, we have the chance. And then next turn I may have to kill a creature with a braid instead of casting big score. An iconoclast with kicker. So that's gonna hit us pretty hard. Okay, cultivation we can also channel. So we're not too far from actually casting a Titan of Industry. So maybe discard to destroy evil and big score. Static net's good too. So attack with the shaman. And then I think the plan is channel cultivation, cast a braid. And wait and see what we need to braid here. If there's a partners, we'll take that out. Stormseeker, also good to kill here before it triggers. And I have the option of channeling this to ambush the Firebrand after it attacks. Although I could just take it and then next turn we can cast a Titan, which is probably good enough. So we'll channel and take six. So I need to attack with my Shaman to make an extra treasure. And cast a Titan of Industry. And if our Reflection is still alive, that can easily take over. So I'll put a Shield Counter on it and probably make a Rhino over gaining 5 life. And then it's going to be hard for them to take out a 7-7. Seven, seven. And Reflection with a Shield Counter will require two answers. This opponent just playing another Stormseeker means we'll get to copy Titan next turn. And that's going to be too much for them to overcome. So block a Stormseeker, block Firebrand, take three. And we get to untap, copying Titan of Industry. And now we can gain five life, make another Rhino. And that's going to be game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's missing... Maybe a couple pieces, but turn 2 cultivation could set up turn 3 big score, which could lead to turn 4 transformation if all goes well. And I don't mind discarding portal to Phyrexia early on. Well, let's see what we're facing. Blue-red. So they could kill our 1-1 one, one monk token end of turn. We got to untap. Did not hit our land drop, sadly. I guess we could go for Bitter Union and then try and hit my land drop that way. And then I can still probably channel another Cultivation or maybe hit for one. And Portal can go. Alright, no land. So that's a bit of a setback. But we can play Fable next turn. As our opponent does the same. Repair and Recharge is a way to get back Portal. 
So does that change how we approach this? I would still need an extra white source to cast Repair and Recharge. Fable, probably the most realistic way to pick up white mana soon. Or I could channel another Cultivation to next turn Big Score and make some more treasure. And that can also set up our transformation. So yeah, maybe we do just strangle the Shaman, channel another Cultivation, and take it from there. Put on discarding a Scrap War Kamut as well. And a Wedding Announcement. Fair enough. So we'll make a token. White mana would have been perfect, but I'll still take a Mountain. Now, Big Score versus Fable. I guess we'll just Big Score discarding, perhaps in a Braid. And uh, we can wait to do that, unless we want to play around a Counterspell, which the opponents could have. Sure, I guess we'll Big Score now then. And uh don't think I would cast another Strangle if I drew it, so this seems fine. Discard a Braid. And that resolved. Okay. So hopefully next turn transformation. Although Repair and Recharge also on the table. As our opponent plays an Urza. So they do have some mana available here, and a static net. Okay, so we have options. How much mana total? Eight if we count the treasures. So technically enough for Fable and a Repair and Recharge. So I could maybe bait with Fable, see if there's a response, and then Repair and Recharge. Don't love letting my opponent untap with a Reflection of Kiki Jiki or Urza, since they can keep that alive through Portal to Phyrexia. That's one approach. Alternatively, we can just go for Transformation, although the opponent could also kill the token we target so we don't get to grab a Titan of Industry. So, yeah, I guess we can Repair and Recharge first, since I don't want to waste my treasures necessarily. And bring back Portal. And see if that works. Our opponent had to make this appear, sacrificing a token so we won't be able to pay for that's fine. So I could go for Fable, or I can just pass and keep my treasure tokens, which I think I prefer. Bono gets back a Scrap Work Mutt. They could copy it with Reflection. And then we gotta hope they tap out so we can set up our transformation. But I'm just discarding a couple lanes. And we'll take the hit. Announcement draws. And there's another transformation. So yeah, I guess we'll give this a try. Target treasure, target a creature, enchantments could also be the opponent's wedding festivity, but probably still better to target a reunion. And no planeswalker, and land can be my own mountain here, for instance. That worked. So we'll get our land, get our titan, and enchantments, and portal to Phyrexia. And then now shield counter, plus take out enchantments. And shield counter on Titan itself. And what do we want to discard? Maybe a fable now. Portal resolves, and we'll play a tapped garden. Well, that was a pretty good turn. Could also sacrifice Bitter Union to attack with Titan. Is that worth it? Sure. Hit the opponent for seven. Although now the Titan's tapped, so Wandering Emperor could exile it, and then Portal wouldn't be able to bring it back. So that was the downside. Alright, there's Wandering Emperor. I'm not just a 
Exiles Titan. And another Urza. Okay, so we'll bring back the opponent's Urza. And then we could chaotically transform once again. Uh, maybe start with a big score discarding a land. Strangle's nice. So could Static Net Urza just attack Wandering Emperor? That's also fine here. Or we could Chaotic Transformation to get another Titan of Industry. There's no portal we can get since the other one's in the graveyard. And yeah, getting another Titan also sounds fun. So an embarrassment of a Riches Static Net. Urza, kill Emperor, maybe good enough for now, and then we'll sacrifice a treasure here to cast it. Okay, pass it back. Still have a portal to Phyrexia in play. Opponent passes, and now we can just hard cast Titan of Industry. If they counter it, we bring it back. So, that seems fun. So let's see if Titan works. It does. And now make a Rhino and shield counter on itself most likely. And Urza can hit for two. Okay. Opponent with a Rending Flame to remove a shield counter. Two cards in hand for a Depopulate, which still draws thanks to Urza. And then now Portal just brings back Titan, so that didn't really accomplish much. Same Song and Dance. And then Wedding Announcements. Can still Transformation get another Titan. And again, no point in targeting an artifact, I don't think. But I can target my Rhino to upgrade it. Do we want to get rid of Static Net, give the opponent Urza back? Could be risky if they manage to meld it. So no enchantments. And a land. Okay. Get Titan and get a land. And we'll go for another Rhino and Shield Counter. Okay. And after I make a token. And our opponent's gonna need more than another Wandering Emperor here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems to have most of the tools we need. Turn 2 we can abraid, or reunion, discarding a titan already. Alright, let's go for a reunion. Couple of lands, so we can probably discard one to the second chapter. Opponent Mardu colors with missionary. Not a must answer. So, yeah, happy to play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And then Cultivation is another way to present a creature for transformation. So, what do we discard here? Is it just two lands? Is it a Braid and a land, since we don't care about Missionary? Although if we kill Missionary, then Shaman Token gets to attack. So, tempted to discard two lands here. Since we'll likely draw another. And then now we have two answers to the missionary. I'll fire off the sorcery speed one first. And hit for two. Okay, so we've got our artifact now to target with transformation, which is a huge deal. Sarah Paragon is acceptable. So channel cultivation, untap, and then transformation should be pretty much game over. Alright, so tap this for mana. And then transformation targets our 1 1, our treasure token, 
And then probably our bitter reunion as well. And the land. And get our lands. Get our portal to Phyrexia. Titan of Industry. And an enchantment will be another fable. That was pretty good value. So we'll make a Rhino put shield counter on Reflection of Kiki Jiki, perhaps. And then attack for two. Still have an Abreda to ready. And next turn we can bring back Paragon or the Titan we discarded earlier in the game. And opponents says GG. And that's game. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand features turn 2 channel cultivation, turn 3 maybe a wedding announcement, and then we're not too far from casting a transformation, just missing an artifact which we can get with repair and recharge potentially. So if we find an expensive card that we don't mind discarding, we would also need a discard outlet, and then we're in business. For now, Channel Cultivation still sets up Announcement, plus Tap Land next turn. Opponent just red-white. And are gonna pass. Hopefully they don't kill my Monk Token end of turn. They didn't. So Announcement Tap Land, I think, beats anything else. Get our Announcement going. Opponent is playing Jeskai Callers. Okay, Poseidon could also go after the opponent's Fable, but uh, for now we could just strangle, attack for two, draw a card, and keep up Poseidon for later, since I don't want to necessarily ramp my opponent this early in the game. So next turn we could Transformation, just missing an Artifact, but we could still get a Titan put on discarding portal to Phyrexia, so we know what's up. And now I know to hang on to Busage as an answer to portal. So next turn our opponent could also have a repair and recharge. And a Sunset Revelry to make a couple tokens gain life. Another wedding announcements. Okay, so if I were to transformation, Titan deals with Fable, but maybe we wait to get Titan to answer an opposing... Uh, Portal to Phyrexia, and then now I guess we attack, so we can play another announcement and draw off both, as opposed to losing our tokens to Portal to Phyrexia anyways. That makes sense. Opponent happy to trade. And then we keep Bosage available for what it's worth. Another transformation and an abrade, also a pretty nice answer to potential artifact. Okay, opponent passes, so do I abrade Reflection? Titan could blow up Reflection, admittedly. So maybe I don't have to go for it now. Alright, let's take our draw step. Static Net also answers Reflection, potentially. So I'm missing a creature to target with Transformation, but we'll get one from Announcement end of turn. Nothing to really repair and recharge, that's meaningful. So could Static Net the Reflection and still keep up a braid. And that will also give us an artifact, so we set up transformation to get Portal to Phyrexia. Opponents go to Wandering Emperor end of turn. Make a Samurai. Keep watch for intruders. Counter on Samurai. So do we want to take it out with an Abraid? Still have Transformation to answer an opposing portal by getting a Titan of Industry. So, yeah, maybe Abraiding being tapped out and giving the opponent the confidence they need to bring back portal is fine. And yep, yeah, there's a Repair and Recharge. Opponent goes for Leveler instead. That's still fine. So, Chaotic Transformation can hit my artifacts. 
creature and enchantments. And then I'll go for the leveled up wedding festivity. So we have another creature coming up. And then we can hit Wandering Emperor to get rid of one. And I'll target my own land. So we maybe get an untapped one. And another static net. Okay, so static nets could go after Wandering Emperor. This one can blow up artifacts and make a Rhino. And then blow up the Power Stone since Leveler dies to Portal. And then static net hits Wandering Emperor. Could also exile Leveler with static net so it doesn't come back. But I don't think that's a huge concern. Okay, and after turn make another token. Got a pretty nice board. Double portal discarded. So it could turn into a portal mirror match in a second. For now get a leveler. Crucible making two tokens can help against an opposing portal. Don't know if I want to necessarily channel it now or keep it at instant speed. Because their opponent could also be running some traditional sweepers. So, yeah, opponent has seen enough, they're going to take a ton of damage here, and then they're still pretty far behind, even if they find a Sweeper. Awesome, so we get to rank up with our Naya Transformation deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Turn to Channel Cultivation, turn 3 Announcement, and then hope for a Discard Outlet to Discard Portal. Maybe find a Transformation. It's not a perfect hand. But uh, turn 2 and turn 3 play, set up already, maybe enough for a keep. Opponent mono blue potentially, so that's going to be a tough matchup. At least they won't be able to counter our cultivation if we channel it. As our opponent goes for impulse. So we found our discard outlet for portal. Now, I don't know if I want to make any play next turn. Unless their opponent misses a land drop, then it may be worth it. They could still have a fading hope end of turn here, bounce my token. But then, unless they have a spell pierce, we can resolve announcement. Opponent has a fading hope, let's see if they also have a spell pierce. As we cast announcements. Looks like it. Alright, that's too bad. Nope, maybe just to consider. So sticking a 3-man enchantment is a big deal. Opponent may feel like they're too far behind and just needs to stick a hot each in, and they sure do. Okay, so can cast Reunion, discard, portal, and then hope to draw Destroy Evil pretty much to take out hot each in. And then I should probably keep some white mana untapped. Found on a braid, so I can attack and then finish off Hardy Jin if they block. Alright, that feels like a win. Get another token, but they likely have another Hardy Jin if they were willing to block with the first one. But we're inching closer to a Chaotic Transformation, which could be quite powerful here. So channel garden to see if we find something we can play and big scores nice now chances of resolving transformation are pretty slim but we can maybe set up an end of turn big score untap and then transformation and if we get an artifact we can also get our portal to Frexia in play opponent going for main phase thirst Discards a land. That was maybe to try and hit a land drop for the turn. Soaring City in the mana base probably implies they're not playing with Flow of Knowledge. Take three. And yeah, I think we're on the big score plan. Can hit for four.
and hope they tap out, basically. Take three for now. End of turn, big score. Discarding, I think, the untapped land. Even though I could draw a Titan of Industry and want to cast it. This may end up being kind of a resource battle and wanting as many action spells as possible, and we can cycle Garden. Can pay for Spell Pierce and make disappear at least. So it's going to be a negate. And yeah, I think we go for Transformation. Or I can wait until I can pay for another Spell Pierce or make disappear. Either way, I can attack for four if I'd like. And see if there's a response. Alright, I think I'm tempted to wait and then just cycle Garden. Don't love my opponents potentially casting another card draw spell end of turn if that's what they have. So that's a reason to still make them have a counter spell. But if this resolves, we pretty much win the game. So I just gotta try my best to make that happen. So, Cycle Garden, in case I find some other main phase spell I can cast. Repair and Recharge. We have a portal in the graveyard. So this is a must counter. Opponent didn't have anything end of turn. Take four. And to be honest, we are dealing for a turn as well, so we're not necessarily too far behind in the race. Tolarian Terror, two mana left. Okay, so go for Repair and Recharge. Get back Portal and hope for the best. Now they could potentially sacrifice a creature to make disappear to counter still. So that could have been a reason to Transformation first and then if we hit a land drop, go for uh, Repair later. But no, Portal resolves, put on just with a March to save their creatures. So I don't think we can afford to attack since we need to leave blockers back for Tolarian Terror. And uh, yeah, at the moment we can bring back Hotigen from the opponent at least with our portal to Phyrexia. So we have a long-term plan. That to double bounce spell. And then how many instant slash sorceries do we have? We have three at the moment, could make it four, which is important so we can actually trade for Hotigen. And here we can jump. And another Terror. Bring back Hotigen. And a Titan of Industry, which we can hardcast. Although I'm tempted to go for Transformation here. Opponent could still have an Essence Scatter in hand, which they haven't had the chance to cast. So that's Strike against Titan. Transformation gets a discount, so they won't be able to counter this very easily. So yeah, let's Transform. Target my Power Stone. Token and enchantment. And a land as well. Alright, let's see if this works. Alright, looks like that does. Get a land, get a titan, get an enchantment, and cultivation can go on. Odigen, I guess. And get another portal to Phyrexia. Put on sacrifices three creatures. We get a Rhino gain five life, I think. And that may very well be game. Puns at 12. That to an all out attack. And we've got another Titan in hand. Bring back Tolarian Terror Hodigen. Awesome, and that's game, so very close one here against Mono Blue, but Portal to Phyrexia gets it done. So yeah, this Naya transformation deck's a ton of fun if you get to resolve the transformation.
but we've got enough early game tools between our spot removal and some of our value enchantments like Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Wedding Announcement that we sort of force the opponent to at some point tap out to answer what's going on and then we can try and sneak our transformation into play when they least expect it so it's still important to have enough early game that uh, you can more successfully get to the late game combo so yeah that's gonna do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd